Welcome to the South Bank Investment Daily. Well, uh, over the weekend, the U.S. government decided that they would finally agree to pay the nation's debts, and uh, that's uh, been a big deal for markets. There's been a lot of hyperbole around whether uh, they would agree some sort of budget deal uh, to raise the debt ceiling, and I think you know that obviously there's a risk, uh, but it does tend to get blown out of proportion. Because the risk of not raising the debt ceiling is that uh, the government will stop paying state pensions. Now, can you imagine what that would look like in the UK if the government said, right, uh, we've borrowed too much money. Uh, we're not going to uh, increase the amount of money that we're going to borrow. Uh, so now we're going to be good boys and we're not going to... Uh, increase any money we're not going to spend money we don't have uh, but sorry about those pension promises that we made to uh, the poorest pensioners uh, that don't have private pensions we're not going to be paying those pensions this month there would be public outcry there would be uh, i think in any election those politicians would lose their jobs and there could be a revolution that's what we're talking about if they were to stop uh, paying the debt or uh, not allow the debt ceiling to rise. Now, of course, there are lots of other questions. There are questions about the sustainability of the debt overall and whether uh, the uh, kindness of strangers, in other words, will foreigners uh, continue to fund the USA's massive debts? Uh, that's an entirely different question and eventually will have to be addressed. But what we do know is that if they do raise the debt ceiling, and it'll probably get voted on this week, uh, then it means that the U.S. Treasury is going to have to go off and issue a lot more bonds. And that's a lot of money printing. So now gold is starting to rally. Because the, uh, the catch-22 of raising the debt ceiling is simple enough. Uh, that if they do raise the debt ceiling, uh, then it means that they're going to have to print more money. And if they don't raise the debt ceiling, there would be a recession of monumental proportions, which would necessitate that they print more money. So one way or the other, there's going to be more money printed. It's going to devalue the dollar even further. And gold is now in the process of putting in an upside key day reversal. So that is certainly some evidence of support coming through at the lower side of this range that's been forming now for about two months. Uh, but I think the bigger picture here is that gold prices have been uh, rather steady in the region of this, uh, the upper side of this three year range. And the balance of probabilities, at least to my eye, is that as the dollar depreciates, it's going to put upward pressure on gold prices. Now let's also just think about the oil price. So uh, oil prices are down about $2 today. Now what we can see quite clearly is that there is a very different picture here. Gold is right at the upper side of its range and oil prices have been treading water here below the $80 level for the last few months. But this is the upper side of the underlying range and there has been a clear downward bias to trading. We can see a very clear sequence of lower rally highs. So what this is basically telling us is that uh, all of this talk about uh, oil prices at $200 and an acute shortage of oil uh, is a bit wide of the mark. And instead, uh, we should really be thinking about uh, the demand situation. Now, Classically, when one is assessing the outlook for commodities, the demand component is usually more predictable because economic growth is reasonably predictable globally, even if it's hard to predict uh, from one month to the next in each individual country. Generally speaking, economic growth on a global basis tends to be fairly steady. And with economic growth being tied to demand for oil, then generally the demand component is reasonably predictable. Its supply tends to be where the focus is, because if one country shuts down, uh, then that's going to have a big impact on supply. What we have right now is OPEC restricting supply. And that you would normally mean that prices would go up, but they're not going up, they're going down. That tells us that demand is falling. And 
we are thinking right now, well, you know, about the debt ceiling in the USA. We're, but I think what we should be thinking about in terms of oil and the wider uh, energy sector is China. China is the biggest consumer of oil. And if the price is going down, then that tells us that uh, its demand in China is what we should be thinking about. Now, there is something that is increasingly gaining attention internationally, and it is the very low rate at which uh, Chinese government bonds are trading. So the 10-year yield in China is trading at 2.72%. Now, that is significantly below where the gilt yield is trading. Now, let's just think about it. Gilt yields are high because people are worried about inflation. So, therefore, if yields in China are lower, it means people are not worried about inflation. But, of course, that begs the question. Are they instead worried about deflation? And... China went through three years of lockdown because of the pandemic. There was a clear uh, bet that uh, Chinese consumers would come back into the global market and buy hand over fist just about everything that was behind this big rally we had, for example, in Hermes International. And with that big downward dynamic last week, it looks like this is probably over. So maybe we're looking at the potential that it is deflationary forces in China are having an impact on the oil price. But now the next question is, if the USA had to print more cash uh, in order to uh, handle the debt ceiling, isn't it also likely that China is going to have to print more money in order to uh, combat some of their deflationary forces? And that, I think, is one of the reasons why oil prices haven't fallen further. Because when China does stimulate, when they are forced eventually into providing additional liquidity to the economy to stoke consumer demand, then that is going to be a bullish factor for oil prices. Now, as we look around the world, obviously there is a great deal of enthusiasm right now in the artificial intelligence sector. And NVIDIA in uh, early trading this morning is up to uh, $406. So that's putting it somewhere up there. Now, as we look at the phenomenal advance here, uh, this is obviously pricing in uh, the very real potential that artificial intelligence is going to be a very significant factor in the economy of the future. One of the big challenges for NVIDIA, despite the fact that it is the go-to share, is that it is trading on a price-to-sales ratio of 37.3. Now, that implies that at the current price and current revenue, if they spent not one penny on anything else, it would take over 37 years for them to earn back the valuation on the share right now, which is a pretty extraordinary valuation. I will also highlight that uh, at the top of the bull market in 1999, Cisco Systems traded at a price to sales ratio of 60. So when we, and that was considered an historically large valuation. So as we look at this mania that is developing in the artificial intelligence sector, then there is obviously the potential that we could see uh, prices go up very significantly. And the Philadelphia Semiconductors Index has also broken on the upside. So what this is also telling us is that the appeal of the semiconductor sector is improving as we look around and uh, people think about uh, where can they put some of their available cash and uh, there's obviously people want to go back and take a second bite at the cherry in the technology sector we had a deep pullback from the peaks in 2021 all the way through to the lows in october of 2022 People have viewed reversions to the region of the 1,000-day moving average as buying opportunities, and it did that uh, all the way back in July of last year, and we had a failed downside break in uh, October. So now uh, 
I think it, people want to believe that uh, the next leg of the technology bull market is in play and that it is inevitable that the central banks are going to uh, begin cutting rates soon and that will enhance the liquidity situation so that we will go back into a benign economic environment. But the big wrinkle in that sunny disposition is inflation and inflation has to be got under control and until it is under control then central banks are a wild card. So we're still not out of the woods just yet but certainly there are portions of the market that are uh, very interesting from an investor or a trader's perspective and I'd like to wish all the best to all of you.